Well, one element that I, I could think of, Matt Damon, uh, you know, if I, if I had this material in hand, would be that some people want something from him that he doesn't know about. And that reminds me of, like, Born Identity and all these things. Like, people are behind him. Like, there's some, a greater force. Like, does, does he have this sort of image of persona? I, I, you, you mean just the, the, the uh, fighting a conspiracy idea? Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's carried over from, from the Bourne movies, but I tend to think of Matt more as um, he, he's very good at representing sort of the guy you know next door, the guy you had a beer with, you know, your coworker at work. He doesn't seem above and separate the way some movie stars do. He seems like your friend, and um, that makes him incredibly relatable. And that's how he is in real life, and that's how he comes across on screen. And so if you have a person who's at the center of a conspiracy and running from that conspiracy or fighting that conspiracy, what you want is somebody who's relatable who could be you. Um, you got a little, um, a little sneaky in the way that you placed Matt with like famous people and like political figures to establish him. Can you talk a little bit about that too? Uh, well, it, it's to establish him, but it's also to ground the story in a level of reality because the, the premise is so fantastical. I wanted that ground, that reality grounding. Um, and we just, we just asked. Uh, we just went to people. We went to Mayor Bloomberg, for example, and said, you know, we have this project and Matt's playing a congressman and we showed him the script and he said yes. And uh, we went to the other people in the movie, um, went to Wolf Blitzer and CNN, Mary Madeline and James Carville. Uh, went to the people that he was talking to, Jesse Jackson, Wesley Clark. That was at a, a, an event that, that Matt was at, and we had the cameras there, and we said, here's what we're doing, and you'll just ad-lib, and are you okay with it? And everybody we approached said yes. If you had adjustment powers, what would you use there for? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, I, if, I were, if I were the chairman, yes. well, I guess I'd try to make the world a better place. Who would you reset? <laughs> I'd go dictator by dictator and reset them. Well, it's been working for the past two weeks now, <laughs> yeah, right? It has, it has. Was that you? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, but, but I am, I am, uh, it's nice to see that. Um, what, what are your next projects you're working on? I've written a couple scripts, or I'm in the process of writing a couple scripts that, uh, that I'd like to do next um, as a writer-director. Um, but I don't know which one. I have to see which one rises to the to the top, one that I like the best. And I'll probably try to do it like this one, where I go to cast first and then and then go to uh, a financing partner or a studio. Well, was that determining, like, to make this movie, to have Matt be part of it, or Emily, for that matter? Uh, what do you mean determining? Um, but, like, was that um, um, like something that really helped you to make it? Oh, absolutely. I mean... Uh, no, no studio in the world would finance the movie if I just walked in and said I'd like to make a movie of this size and scope without a movie star. Um, so yeah, it, it was Matt saying I want to do this movie, I believe in this guy as a director and I'll back him 100% as a director that was the most important uh, piece of, of uh, a studio saying okay we'll, we'll go along with that. Cool, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -huh.